guys, it's Dr. Carter at Lexington Podiatry, and we have our one-of-a-kind COVID toe. Ha! That is patented by this young man's wife, so don't use that phrase. It's just for us. Um, he normally gets pedicures to keep his ingrown toenail under control, but since COVID hit, a lot of people haven't been doing that, women and men alike. So it's kind of just left to him to try to dig it out, which is not safe either, or his wife, and gosh only knows we don't want wives like digging at their husbands. That could be torture. Um, so we're going to take his ingrown toenail out. So come on down here and let's look at it. Um, as you can see, it's digging in pretty severely at this time. It's causing all this redness and swelling. I don't think it's actually infected yet. I think it's more inflamed. Um, we're gonna squeeze on it. We're gonna put a tourniquet on it and then I'm gonna clean it off. And we're kinda gonna go from there. All right, any allergies debated on? None. Just all of those other crazy things. All right, we're gonna clean them off. That gives them a pretty orange glow. That could be the COVID glow. Alright. So now we're gonna test him and see if he's numb. Can you feel any of this? Alright. So now that he's numb, I did put more numbing medicine in for a couple of reasons. Number one, the more inflamed it is, it seems to neutralize the numbing medicine. And number two, he is a redhead. And so the rumor is actually true. Redheads do take more numbing medicine. And they may have bigger tempers. I'm not really sure about that, but he says yes. All right, sweetheart, if you feel anything, you let me know, okay? We're gonna loosen the cuticle from the nail. Make sure we get it nice and good. Now, this is the part that looks the scariest where we go under there, and you can see my instrument is lifting up on the skin way down in there. That's where the root of the nail comes from. He acts like he really likes me talking through this too, so. <laughs> now, because he is a man, he's not super concerned about the width of his nail. He doesn't normally paint them. So I'm gonna take a larger chunk than I would on a female who wanted to wear sandals and show her toes every day and keep them painted. Um, that will help me to get rid of all the inflammation and really help to ensure that it doesn't come back. Okay, so we go down in there. And, ooh, that's the best part. Look at that. So nails have roots on them just like teeth. Um, they go down below the skin. We have heard that there is a fairy that if you want to put that nail under your pillow, you may end up. All right, I'm gonna just clip, <laughs> clip the rest of his nail. We will not talk about that piece that just flew off and went into my hair. We'll get that in a minute. <laughs> that is a danger of the job. Okay, now I'll check it just to make sure we got all of it out. Um, before we started, we talked about the possibility of not being able to put the sodium hydroxide in there. As you can see up here, the skin is pretty irritated from a couple of things. Number one is the nail poking in, and number two is it being inflamed for so long. However, down in this part, it looks really healthy, so I don't think we're gonna have a problem putting the chemical in there. All right, perfect. We use sodium hydroxide, like I said, it's a basic compound and it kills the cells way back in here that actually produce the nail. If I kill the cells, there's nothing there to produce a toenail. When it mixes with blood, it does turn black. So that can be kind of scary for patients sometimes. If I'm concerned about the chemical not working, I will sometimes go back in between the applications and scratch the nail bed so I expose different cells. I feel like that helps to give me better long lasting results, especially on the ones that we question. This is done in chemical or in applications of 10 seconds and there's three of them. Doing too many can really cause a reaction. So afterwards, my dear, you're gonna see redness down here at the base of the toe. You're gonna see swelling, you're gonna see drainage. The drainage may even have a yellowish discoloration to it, and you may think it's infected. Realistically, only a small percent of them, probably less than 2% actually get infected. So unless the redness comes down to where that tourniquet's at, I doubt you have an infection. Um, it's gonna be really important as his nurse to help pull the skin over and make sure he's doing it. 
I don't want this to close over too quickly because I want the chemical to drain out. So you have to make sure you kind of massage and manipulate that skin and keep it kind of soft and moist, okay? Perfect. Your end result is gonna fold over and hopefully you'll never have another ingrown toenail, okay? It'll definitely feel better. All right. So we dress it with just a little bit of a polysporin and some Coban. The first one I put on kind of tight because right after the procedure, it does bleed the most. You won't need such a big dressing after the fact. This one may stretch all the way to your head, realistically. And this one, we're gonna cover it and make it a cute little package. Can I light your pen? And then the final little step, which is the most important for healing, as you will see, is you can't be sad looking at that all day. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so there you have it, guys. In the middle of a pandemic, yes, sometimes you can't go get your nails done, and that's okay. We really don't need to let it get to this point, though. He's learned his lesson the hard way, and next time he's going to come in here, despite what's going on in the world, and let us address it quicker. You all have a good day. Thanks for watching.